Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of UPS's Small Business Spotlight Series. My name is Sarah Barnes Humphrey. I am the founder and host of Let's Talk Supply Chain and CEO of SHIPS. I am super excited to be here and host this amazing conversation between the incredible Evelyn Nero, founder of Ellie Bianca, and the fabulous Kat Marin, VP of Marketing from UPS. So let's get started, ladies. Why don't you tell us who you are, what you do, and what is the number one thing about small business you would like the audience to know? So let's start with you, Kat, and then we'll move on to Evelyn. Hi, I'm Kat Marin, and I'm Vice President of Marketing, and I've been in the logistics business for about 26 years. Um, I currently manage our U.S. revenue management team, but prior to that, I created our diverse customer segment team, which is why this conversation with, with Evelyn today is so special and so uh, wonderful to do. The two things, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I have two things that I think are really exciting about what's happening in the SMB world today. One is e-commerce. It's three years of progress within three months of time. So we have trended so fast as a globe right now. The opportunities are amazing if we think about them and if we can adapt to them quickly. And most of that's on the back of small and medium businesses around the world. And then the second thing, which is near and dear to my heart as a statistic to think about and hopefully drive the conversation today, is that if women and men were to participate in the economy equally around the world, it would suggest that global GDP would increase by about $28 trillion or 26% by 2025. So the power of small businesses and women in the economy, I think are a great starting point to our conversation today, Sarah. Yeah, so I'm Evelyn Nero and uh, I founded the brand uh, named after my daughter, Ellie Bianca. And this came after, you know, several years of running an oil and gas engineering company and traveling all over the world connecting and providing solutions for oil and gas development. And, you know, in one of those trips, I found myself in Central Africa in Chad. And I had an experience that pushed me and said, you need to, I need to do something. I need to start having min meaningful conversation around women empowerment um, and, and gender equality. And really, it just, I, I said, I needed to start. And I said, I'm going to move on and I'm going to start not just talking about it, but start a brand that creates, that becomes a, a vehicle to having that conversation. So, you know, knowing nothing, I'm a chemist, biologist by background, so I know the science, but I did not know nothing about the industry. Just jumped on, started researching, made um, our first product, a lip balm. And, you know, I look back today, I say from lip balm to now having about 22 SKUs selling our products um, across Canada and online all over the world. This really, really, it's just an amazing journey, but along the way, uh, inspiring other women to believe in their dreams and just that power of starting, the power of starting. So Evelyn, I want to know what has been the single biggest challenge of the past few months for Ellie Bianca? You know, you can imagine, um, when the pandemic started, you know, we had already just had a, a 2020 plan in place to support our strategy for the growth of our company. There was the excitement of, you know, here we are, the 2020 comes with double blessings. That's kind of how I felt. It's like, yeah. it's, we are five years into this business. I feel like I kind of know what I'm doing. And I want to take the brand to the next level. I uh, just come back from Germany, you know, trying to explore what it will look like to get Ellie Bianca into Europe. And within almost, you know, it almost stopped overnight. And everything started to get gloomy and it, it, the clouds started to set in. And voila, there was the lockdown. So a piece of me goes, do I just stay and keep watching TV and keep getting depressed? Or do I become part of the solution? Right. That minute when I got the phone call from Service Canada, they had been sending emails saying, you know, we need to build up capacity. You know, we need industry to step up and do something. But when I got the actual phone call, I had to snap out of my bed and stop watching Netflix and just say, I need to get in. I need to be part of a solution. I want a story that I can tell my daughter, my daughter can tell her friends, 
when I'm not here down the line and say, you know, the pandemic hit and this is what I saw my mother do. So literally I came to the office, I started putting our plans in place of let's start producing hand sanitizers. And as I was just putting all the list of items of what I need to do, there was this nag of where do we get packaging from? Because we don't have much packaging in Canada. Yeah. Where are we getting our ingredients from? As I'm piecing everything and what is the lead time? There was another set of panic. And that is how I reached out to our UPS account manager who literally became part of Eli Bianca. I felt like that. It just was right in with me and saying, hey, trying to get your packaging from China? Let's figure out how we make it happen. You know, setting up systems to making phone calls with me, following up with various levels. Of course, you know, there was the slowdown of every industry to get, every, get the packaging here, to get the ingredients here, and there was UPS. They said, you know, I work with everybody else, um, but UPS for me at that minute when I needed them the most to get my supplies as quickly as possible, they had solutions and the solutions were quick. They were timely. Well, and that's what it's all about, right? It's all about, I always say this, collaboration is the future of business. And if you can't rely on the partners that you're working with to really help you in challenging times, then, you know, what, what are you doing really? And so it's nice to hear that you were able to take your business, be part of the solution in, in helping in challenging times and that UPS was able to support you in that journey. And I think, you know, there's been a lot of impacts that have come out of the last couple of months. Kat, you're seeing a lot on the small business side, obviously at UPS and, and working with a lot of uh, small business as well. So what are some of the impacts that you've seen from your small business customers over COVID? So Evelyn hit it on the head, I think, um, in the first place. We had four key areas that came out of about 16 weeks worth of research that we did every single week with our SMB customers. And they were starting with inventory delays and visibility, right? You said yeah. we needed to know how our customers could get their supplies in, their packaging in, et cetera. We had to work around different governmental constraints to figure that out. The second thing that they told us was labor and fulfillment. So when their own labor forces were at home, but they needed to figure out how to get the stuff off the shelves to be shipped to their customers, that right. was a big challenge. So we had to work with them on warehousing. The third thing was e-commerce shifts. No surprise, I already talked about the fact three months worth of, of growth in e-commerce, in a, or three years worth of growth in three months made the fact that consumers were at home. Yeah. Business people were at home. They were buying things like crazy and our customers were trying to fulfill that, but they didn't have the manpower or sometimes the space to do that. And then the last thing they kept telling us, and this is again, a tough, one of the toughest ones to solve, cash flow. So right. they all had to almost to a, to a T had to relook at their cost structures, figure out how to drop costs in some places so they can invest in others, how they had to get their revenue streams up to cover the sunk costs that were there, sometimes paying for employees, obviously, who weren't even working. So these were four critical areas that came to the surface pretty quickly. Um, and we certainly tried to, to pivot ourselves to be able to respond and support them in those spaces. So Evelyn, I want to ask you a little bit because you, you know, you saw an opportunity there, right? You were, you, you were working in your day-to-day -day business and then you wanted to be a part of the solution. Can you tell us about how you realized that you could be part of the solution and what the, what the opportunity really was and what you've seen in your business as a result of that? You know, it's, it was just really simple. One, I needed to keep myself busy. I'm that kind of girl that needs to be doing something. And I just couldn't stand being at home. Right. So I needed to make sure that I'm doing something. But that I wanted to be doing something that is meaningful. And being able to contribute and being able to be part of, the, uh, be current, really. And, and that, that's really how we jumped on and did the the hand sanitizers, we've seen the sanitizers continue to grow from just selling to uh, retailers to now supporting offices as companies start to reopen. Um, but we've moved further now to also provide hand soap, something that we normally do not 
offer. Oh. And with that, it has opened other opportunities for us. It has opened other retail chains that we will not be selling at um, previously because you know, we, we do uh, luxury skincare. Amazing. I love to hear that because I knew you were doing the hand sanitizers, but I didn't know about the hand soap. And so, you know, it's really been able to open up a lot of doors for you. And you were saying that UPS really was a, a good support in that because I'm sure you would have had to change some of the packaging, right? Or, or the business model, the sourcing, the some other model, things yeah. and some legal requirements. We've seen oh, a lot of that lately. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this was a complete shift. You know, because one, um, we're now dealing with a regulated product, you know, hand sanitizer are reg are regulated by Health Canada. They are considered to be um, medicinal product. So there had to be a major, major shift. You know, we needed to get different ingredients that we normally don't purchase. We needed to get all sorts of uh, regulatory approvals to be able to produce this product, you know, just knowing that I had this partner and I have, and we continue to work closely together that, you know, they've taken this project as if it's their own. And I didn't need to worry about that part. I didn't need to be calling and saying, hey, where is this at? I'm actually getting regular updates of, hey, your package is now in the US. Your package will be arriving in Canada this and this and day. Or by the way, we have a delay here and together we will navigate and find solutions. It really gave me the time to focus on spending time in the lab and making sure that the products are ready as opposed to worrying and, and chasing um, my material. Yeah. Right. And if I can jump in, Sarah, because yeah. I'm so excited about that. I think that that is a great testimony to some things that we started investing in pre-COVID, but we really extended and accentuated during this time frame, And that's getting information into both our customers' hands more frequently, more readily, and right. letting them find a faster means to get it into their customers' hands. And, and when that power of the data when that power of the technology, the infrastructure works as it should be, then even when mistakes happen or even when problems crop up, you can all manage it. And I think that's the one of the biggest takeaways I think that we've had um, in our processes. And, and I think that we're seeing that happen, happen and help our small customers um, as well as large ones in, in the last few months. So, you know, with everyone getting their heads around businesses going into the new normal, right? We're hearing that term a lot, the new normal. Um, there's huge demands, especially on business owners, service providers, you know, CAT as, as UPS. And you talked a little bit about this on the warehousing side, right? Because we've got a hybrid working environment that we're all looking to go back into. So what changes has, have each of you made to make your businesses go from full-on distribution and what you were doing pre-COVID to now into that hybrid working environment. Kat, I'm going to start with you. So I, I'm, I'm actually really proud to say that of all of our global UPSers, we never actually stopped, right? We couldn't. We didn't stop moving packages. We didn't stop right. flying planes or loading cargo and getting things in the ocean moved and, and sometimes even putting things on gondolas in, in Venice, right? It couldn't stop. It was a critical part. Uh, component of, I think, the economy. So on that standpoint, it wasn't quite business as usual, to say the least. We had to make sure our employees were safe and that they were safely connecting with our customers. They understood when customers were open or closed. And so all that communication had to change. But the day-to-day, -day, we felt an obligation to, to stay up and running. Um, for our, our other organizational parts, we did have to shift a little bit. So again, my marketing group, my sales groups and the IE or the engineering teams, we had to come together really quickly to find unique solutions that would really help in these crisis situations. So whether or not it was, you know, extending our My Choice for Business dashboards, which are kind of that visibility chain in transportation, you know, very easy way for small businesses to not have to focus on transportation logistics, but to focus on their, their day job, what they're supposed to do. Last but not least, as we wrap up here, this has been an amazing conversation, ladies, and I'm so you know just honored to be part of it. What is the best piece of advice you'd offer to small business owners watching this? You know, for me, the last piece of advice is around flexibility. 
So one needs to be flexible during this time. This is not the time to be rigid. So be flexible. Second is, you know, now everything is moving online. And especially for women entrepreneurs in particular, we tend to shy away from technology. You know, technology is here to stay. But we have a challenge of, as we move online, how do we ensure that we are not transactional, that we are actually cultivating um, a relationship online? So as opposed to just selling a product or selling your services and walking away, think about ways of having um, and cultivating a relationship with, with your audience. Absolutely great advice. I don't know about you, but I am definitely feeling inspired today. You know, from hearing about how Evelyn and the team at Ellie Bianca have shown agility, passion, hard work, and their commitment in helping more small business thrive to the crucial and impactful support that UPS provides their small business customers and helping to drive diversity and inclusion forward. I am so hopeful and excited to see what these two organizations do next. Thank you to you, the audience, for joining us today. Thank you to the team at UPS for the opportunity to host such a wonderful discussion. And to Evelyn and Kathleen, or Kat, for joining me today and sharing all your amazing insights on such hot topics today.